All right. Welcome to the Wednesday video, everybody. So one of the biggest requests that we got in the the poll on the channel was ritual work. So one of the things to understand about ritual work, we're going to get like we're going to get into this and it's going to be a video series and there's going to be several videos for this. So there's several different ways, there's actually millions of ways that you you can attack ritual work. And most of the time, here, give me a quick second here to see if I have it over here. Yeah, hold on one second. Most of the time when we get into ritual work, we, we start with something like this or spell work or things like that. So, and these are all wonderful books, right? So this one right here is, you can't make out the cover, but Spells for the Solitary Witch, um, which is a great book, honestly. It's really good. Um, Psychic Witch. Right? This is also another wonderful book. I wonder why the cover on this one wouldn't show up. There it is. Okay. So Psychic Witch. Great book. Awesome book. You know, a lot of a lot of great information in there. And then, you know, we have a habit we'll, we'll from there, from those types of books. Then we'll roll into these kinds of books right here. Right? The complete book of black magic and witchcraft, right? And We'll look, we'll look at these and we'll say, okay, so plentiful, full of knowledge, right? The one book that we always skip over, though, is this one. This is the book we skip over right here. And you're probably wondering, well, what is that? What book is that? It's the one you write yourself. So there comes a point inside of ritual work where we understand how to call the corners we understand the basic like the basic mechanics of invocation and we have you know pretty much everything that we would need to have in front of us to proceed with ritual work prefer with higher high magic right and when we look at, you know, that information that we have and we try to start to utilize it, we try to bring it up another level. What happens a lot of times, we don't get the results we want. Sometimes we don't get results at all. And that can be very discouraging for a lot of practitioners. It leads a lot of practitioners to believe, well, maybe this is just all bullshit. Maybe... You know, what it is that, you know, I'm, you know, trying to do, maybe, maybe it's more, you know, about me and, you know, and it is to uh, a high degree, to a high degree, it is, you know, very, very focused, you know, on, on you and, you know, what you do and how you do things. However, however, I'm here to tell you that everything that we believed in, everything we wanted to believe in, everything we wanted to happen, everything we looked forward to, you know, what made us excited to get a new deck of tarot cards, what made us excited about buying that new book, what made us excited about, you know, reading, you know, a different author and a different perspective. It's all there. It's all real. You know, every entity that you want to work with, Belial, Baphomet, Lucifer, Lilith, they're all there. They all exist. Right? The question shouldn't be is if this entity or these entities are real or not real. The question is, is are you dialing the right phone number? Are you doing the right things to manifest these entities into your life? Right? Is it the right time for them to manifest into your life? And the easiest thing, the easiest way to answer this question is I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to give you a step-by-step. -step. And I do apologize because I know a lot of people are looking for that. A lot of people are looking for that step-by-step, -step, right? That, you know, first do this and then you do this and then you do this and then this is going to happen. But that's different for everybody. 
that's that's a different path for every each individual person it's different what you need to do for you to reach that point that apex you know of spiritual enlightenment and you know gnosis it's different for everybody and you're probably wondering well how the fuck do i find mine that's a good question the question i ask myself a thousand times over and then i realized and this is something i've mentioned a lot of times in the podcast th then i realized it's not about i've read the wrong books or i'm following the wrong instructions it's the fact that i'm following instructions at all it's the fact that i'm not really opening myself up and putting myself out there right for these entities to want to work with me right i'm 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 i'm, I'm coloring by numbers right and wondering why my painting isn't going into a gallery Think about that for a second. Think about that analogy for a second, because that's essentially what we're looking at, right? Is you have this artistic inclination and you want to create a work. So what you do to practice is you get color by numbers and you color in the numbers as it says you need to color in the numbers and you get this beautiful, you know, Monet or, you know, Picasso or whatever, you know, that looks it does it looks amazing but you can't do anything with it other than hanging on your wall and say yep it was colored by numbers right you got a result you just didn't get the result you were looking for and generally speaking the result that we're looking for comes after the work that we put into it right so there's different levels of what you get out from what you put in so if you put in the time and the energy and the effort into a color by numbers you get a piece of artwork that definitely isn't original but you can hang it on your wall and you can still say yeah i did that you know to your friends and stuff like that and that's all great but a lot of us what we're looking for is that next step right we we, we want to create a truly original work that blows people's minds and gets us into an expo, right? That gets us shown off. And at the end of the day, in order to do that, right? We have to be willing to open ourselves up to ourselves. And I know that sounds really weird to some people, open yourself up to yourself. Open up your mind to the possibilities of what is necessary for you to reach that level. Understand that the idea of the world that you have built around you is built around limitation, right? We are built in a society that says we are limited, that we can't do certain things for one reason or another it doesn't matter what it is however we're also taught that we can do anything we want so which is it are we built inside of a limitation or can we do whatever we want and the answer to the question is very simple is we can do whatever we want but it requires reprogramming it requires us to kind of take you know that leap forward and say okay i need to do something different I need to do something larger. I need to reverse my thinking and dive in. I need to open to these possibilities. And reprogramming is not easy. Like reprogramming your mind to be open to these things is not easy. When you start to feel that inkling, like you want to do a ritual or you think that like okay like you know i know that there's something else out there you're at the edge right you're you're just starting right that isn't that isn't the switch and a lot of us get confused and we think that that's the switch and then we jump into ritual and we light the candles and we light the incense and we say the incantation and then nothing happens we're like fuck 
again, nothing. That's because you overshot yourself again. You keep overshooting the line, right? That is what's, that, that is what's happening. We're overshooting the line. We're not allowing ourselves to fully submerge into this, okay, I am capable of anything. I am capable of anything. We need to fully bring ourselves to the point of not proving it to ourselves by doing it, but believing that we're truly believing that we're able to do it because you can't do anything without truly believing you're capable first. It's just a matter of fact. And that takes time. That in and of itself takes time, right? To be ready to work with an entity like Baphomet or Lilith or, you know, Belial or Lucifer, it takes time to get to the point where you truly believe that you can actually open up a channel of communication with these entities, right? We try to play it off to ourselves, right? That's what we do. Like most of the time we try to play it off in the mind, like, Hey, yeah, you know, that little voice in the back of my head, maybe that was Lucifer. Maybe that was Lilith. Maybe, maybe that was direction. No, that, that was your own head. That, sorry, that was your own head. Okay. That was you talking to yourself. That was you trying to create a self-fulfilling prophecy. And it's not that you can't hear them. It's not that you can't communicate with them. You can, they are there, but you're not ready yet. So the one thing that I learned through the years of the work that I've done is putting myself into a position where I do believe that I am truly capable of anything. And I'm the one that's required to put the work in. But once I put the work in with reprogramming the mind and bringing myself to this, this, this point of truly, fully believing that I can bring in these external forces, right, to connect with me, to work with me, truly, fully, like unequivocally, believing on all levels through and through that I'm capable of doing this. That's when you're ready. And for each person, it's different. Your, your ability or your, your knowing that you're ready for something or that you're going to be able to do something is different for every single person, right? You will know, you will know through and through when you're at that level to say, okay, it's time to do this. So the first step in ritual work before we get into, you know, setups and the way that I do things, which I'll show a few rituals and how I do them and, you know, things like that, you know, we'll, I'll, we'll, we'll record some ritual work. The first step for you, believe. Because if you're only half believing, and you're only trying to dabble in it a little bit to see what you can do, you might be able to conjure up something here and there. But if you really want the big changes, you really want to reach out and, you know, say, come unto me and give me knowledge. And show me the path. Show me a path. You need to be ready for that shit. And if you haven't been able to get a response yet maybe you're jumping the gun maybe the internal parts of you that need to be ready aren't ready yet and that's fine there's nothing wrong with not being ready yet it's frustrating when things don't happen in the time frame that we want them to happen and that I completely understand but if we are going to make this work we need to take that time. And so <clears throat> one of the things that I, I, I like to do is I'm not, not big on meditation. I have a hard time with meditation, especially silent meditation. But one of the things that I do is, you know, I do burn incense. I do throw on some, you know, chants and things like that. And then I allow myself to focus and I allow it to flow over me. Right? Like I allow myself to get lost in the stars. I allow myself, you know, to look at the night sky you know, look at a full moon and get lost in it. 
it, it's very much like the idea of kind of bringing yourself back to your childhood and allowing yourself to feel the things that fascinated you then to fascinate you now to cross over, right? Don't always look for a logical explanation because it's something that Mystic has said many times in the show, which is 100% true. The moment that you start looking for logical explanations and things, you start to kill that part of you that believes. Could there be a logical explanation for certain things? Yes. But if you feel in your gut, hey, this thing is a sign, then it probably is. So the first step here, and what I want you guys to practice from now until next Wednesday, is believing. Believe that you're capable of doing something. Believe wholeheartedly that you can make things happen. Bring yourself to that point. And then next week's what, what we'll do is I'll give you a brief kind of like show of how, how I work with Baphomet directly, right? And how I call on Baphomet, okay? And maybe it's something you can use. Maybe it's something you can add to what you already do. Maybe it's something that you're just not going to like altogether. But it's something that we can do. So your homework for this week. Find a way to meditate your mind and focus and bring yourself to a trance-like state, however you, that works for you. If it's complete silence, traditional meditation, you know, whatever works for you. Because a lot of this is how it works for you. We've got the base knowledge. We've got the base understanding. These, this series of videos is going to assume that you already know what an athame is, that you know what your, you know, your altar setup is, you know, that, you know, you know what invocation is. I'm assuming that you know this already. Okay, maybe we can do some beginner videos, you know, later on that kind of cover these types of things. But I think that this this knowledge, what we're talking about right now, is something that's not fully focused on. We're not very clearly done in, you know, other mediums. And I think, you know, this is something that a lot of people need to get to that next level. So that's what we're doing. Okay. So with that being said, your homework, find a form of meditation that works for you any form of meditation, something that's going to bring that trance state out, right? Allow you to touch that inner child again, to touch that fascination and that awe that's inside of you, that lives inside of all of us. Find it. And that is going to be the spark that is going to light your black flame inside of yourself. Because like any flame, it requires a spark. And the only way that you can spark and light your black flame is by finding what works for you. So this is also going to be a good exercise for you to be able to research and find things that function for you specifically and not rely on 100% what other people are telling you you need to do or you should do. Because your form of meditation could be a combination of five different things. You tried each one of these five. There's one aspect of it that you like off of each one, but not each one is perfect to how you want it. Put it together. Create a puzzle and put it together. All right, everybody. That is going to be it for today. All right. And we will see you next week for this series. Friday, we got a reaction coming. So, as always, hail thy fucking self. We'll see you in the next one. Peace the fuck out.